Okay, um, everybody, welcome here for the next lecture. Our speaker here is Carsten Strothmann, and he is really uh, infected by a DNS virus uh, already since 30 years. He can't get rid of it, uh, it seems. Uh, so, and I, I don't know, it's, uh, it, can you give it to me as well, you think? After the talk, you might have it. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> so, rescue us, please. <laughs> Thank you, hello, hello, hello. So the question is, do or don't? I want to talk about the difficult suspect of uh, DNS privacy and discussion around that. So we talk about DNS privacy, what that is, why that is needed, uh, the different new technologies like DOH, DOT, D D o DOQ. I will cover that in details. And then the dilemma with, with these privacy enhancing technologies and, and DNS en enhancements and a summary at the end. So I'm uh, a self-employed internet nerd doing DNS and DNSSEC and sometimes IPv6. Uh, I, if time permits, go to RIPE and ITF meetings, but I'm not at all employed with any of the big browser vendors. So I'm not from Mozilla, I'm not from Google. I just talk here about stuff that I have heard, either officially or unofficially in some talks there. But please, please, I'm, I'm just the messenger. Please shoot me. Please don't shoot me <laughs> about what you <laughs> <laughs> So over the last few years, um, the ITF, which is the body, the people who design internet protocols, they expanded the DNS to enhance the privacy of the domain name system. Um, the system that we use to, uh, or our computers use to get IP addresses from uh, domain names and other important data they need. And even though there is more than just the transport protocols, in this talk I will only talk about the transport protocols uh, being DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, and DNS over Quick. So why do we need more DNS privacy? Uh, a, a recent study uh, presented at the ITF meeting in Montreal in July last uh, month um, showed uh, that on a total scale on the whole internet, 8.5% uh, of networks intercept DNS traffic. Uh, so they, they, they uh, capture the queries uh, and they don't let the packet go out to the real intended DNS server. Instead, they redirect the, the packet and answer, the, answer that DNS question locally. Uh, and in China, it's more than 27% uh, uh, of all DNS traffic being intercepted. Now, Korea, uh, uh, it's, it's today, it's the, uh, the fact that the most queries are just answered as if the query was not intercepted. So the users still get the, the correct answer. It's just coming from a different server. But that can change, of course, and, and maybe today it's more, mostly surveillance, uh, looking what people are querying in the internet, but that infrastructure can also be used to change data and change answers. And that is the reason why we need encryption in, in the DNS. So there are new abbreviations, new terminology for all the new technologies. We have DO53, which is the traditional DNS, which is DNS over port 53, UDP and TCP. That's the old stuff that has been around since 1983. Then we have DOT, which is DNS over TLS. I will cover that in a diesel in a moment. Then DOH, which is D DNS over HTTPS, port 443. We have DOQ, which is DNS over Quick, which is something that we'll, we will see in the future. And I cover that in a moment. And then we have DOC, which is DNS over Cloud, which means um, DNS not resolving locally, but through some internet service, Cloudflare, Google, Quad9, or similar stuff. stuff. So first, DOT. It's uh, DNS over TLS. It's, uh, it has an RFC. It's a few years old. And it encapsulates the normal DNS just over TCP and TLS, which is the same transport, transport encryption that we use for the web. 
but on a different port. It's port 853, and it gives us encryption and authentication. And either we authenticate the, uh, the other endpoint through a certificate, like we do that in the web, or we can use Dane, which is a way to validate certificates over DNS and DNSSEC. Both is possible, but most people today use the internet PKI. Uh, this is how normal DNS works. Uh, sorry, there's some German still in the slides. Um, the client on the right side sends the query to some local resolver, which is um, either in your own network or in your ISP's network. That one looks in the cache. If the answer is not in the cache, it goes out and asks a couple of authoritative servers. They collect the answers, and the answer is being sent back to the client. And all that goes completely unencrypted and un not authenticated, meaning uh, the, the client will not get any information if that data is being intercepted or played with or just exchanged. Um, the, the client just doesn't know. It get, gets an answer, and it takes that answer for the truth, which might not be the truth. So with DNS over TLS, uh, this is the situation we have today. It could be that DNS over TLS would go to a local resolver, but I haven't seen that anywhere so far. So what we see is that the client is being reconfigured to do TNS over TLS to some service in the internet, which is not local to the network. Uh, that can either be uh, Google or Cloudflare, uh, these big vendors that have DOT services, or it can be privacy organizations like Digital Courage here in Germany or others that operate DOT servers. It's also possible but I seldom see that to do forwarding. So if you have a local DNS resolver in your network uh, and the communication between your clients and that local DNS resolver does not need to be secured because it's your network and you have control over it, but you want to do forwarding, like uh, not resolve yourself into the internet, then you can secure the forwarding path to the ISP resolver or to any other DOT service in the internet. Uh, DNS over TLS can be operated in two different modi, uh, modes. One is the opportunistic mode, meaning we check whether we can authenticate the endpoint on the other side. And uh, if, if that works out, all good. But if that not works out, we will still use it. So this is very similar to how TLS is being used in the mail world, where all the certificates on the other side are not really checked and, and uh, verified. It's just uh, used for encryption. Or you can configure your DOT client uh, in a strict mode, and then authentication must happen. And if there's a failure in authentication, uh, no data will be sent, uh, meaning the internet is kaput if um, authentication doesn't work. There are a couple of operators, uh, big and smaller ones. Here are a few that you can choose from. There are many, many, many more. Then we have the other, the, the big brother of DOT. It's DOH, it's DNS over HTTPS. Uh, and that is RC 8484 from November last year. And it encapsulates a DNS, as we know, uh, in, in the past, encapsulates that over TCP and HTTPS. It sends it over port 443. And the idea here is that um, an outsider looking at the data stream could not distinguish normal web traffic from DNS traffic uh, that is DOH. And it gives us encryption and authentication, which is the same as with DOT, but it also gives us cloaking. And cloaking here means that we hide the DNS data in web traffic. Uh, and the idea here, it's much harder to, to censor, to stop uh, the DNS traffic if it is intermingled into uh, the normal web traffic going over port 443. This is how it could look like. Uh, the client will send a query actually to a web server on port 443. That web server will detect that this is a DOH DNS query will decapsulate that into normal DNS and will send that query to a DNS caching resolver, and that talks then to the authoritative servers, and that is then normal DNS. Just the, the pink uh, transport line here is uh, encrypted and authenticated. 
I'm now observing the ITF for more than 20 years, and um, the process of getting DOH into an RFC was one of the fastest I've ever seen. Normally, it takes five or six years from the first idea to having an internet RFC, because uh, the ITF is built on, on rough consensus, so you need to first discuss a lot of stuff with the people until you have consensus and you have running code. Uh, with DOH, the first idea, start of the working group, was in November 2017. In March 2018, the draft was ready. The RFC text was complete, and um, they started the working group last call. And working group last call is basically like in a church in a, when, when there's a wedding, uh, asking is there anyone objecting against this? And if nobody calls out either in the meeting or on the mailing list, it becomes an RFC. And that happened in October 2018. Uh, that was under one year from first idea and inception of the working group to uh, getting an RFC out. So that was remarkable. Uh, and that shows the forces that are behind this idea, behind DOH, mainly from the big browser vendors, because they want to have that happen. And so we will see uh, why this is. There's an interesting quote in that RFC saying that filtering or inspection systems that rely on unsecured transport of DNS will not function in a DNS over HTTPS environment due to the confidentiality and integrity protection provided by TLS, meaning that all the devices that look for security incidents in the network um, by looking at the DNS, by looking at unencrypted DNS, will not work anymore. And uh, that scares a lot of administrators in networks that have, of course, good intentions because they want to keep their network secure. Um, but their devices, which were quite, quite um, expensive when they bought it, they won't work anymore in this. And so uh, some people fight DOH because of this, uh, others fight DOH because of other means. But keep that in mind. So um, DOH first appeared in Firefox as a browser in Firefox 61. That was in May of uh, 2018. And uh, initially, there was just a manual switch in about colon config. Uh, so you had to be a nerd to find this out. But in uh, the newer Firefox Quantum, um, this is a screenshot from Firefox 68, which is the, uh, the current one, I think. Uh, you just go into the proxy settings and you scroll all to the end, and then you can check mark enable DNS over HTTPS, and then you can either select today uh, Cloudflare as one of uh, as one provider being in there, or you can select your own value and put the server name in there. And this DOH default roots DE is just my server. So uh, what happened here, or what are Mozilla's plans? Mozilla gave a talk at IETF 105 uh, last month, and um, they plan to enable DOH in Firefox by default at some point of time in the future, but there's no date set. Reason for that is that they still figure out how, can, how they can enable that without breaking a lot of configurations in enterprise environments. Because the problem with, in, with enterprise environments is that they often have their local DNS space, uh, DNS names that are not registered anywhere in the internet, which are just locally to the resolver there. And if the Firefox browser would switch to DOH and use any DOH service in the internet, of course, that would not know about the names used in that company environment. Uh, so um, uh, the users will not be able to find the local Jira wiki or something like that. Uh, and that is bad, of course, bad user experience, and, and Mozilla tries to avoid that. Uh, so they have to figure out a solution for that. But once they have figured that out, their plan is to switch uh, DOH on for everyone. Um, it will not be Cloudflare everywhere. So some people fear that Mozilla will just switch on DOH in Firefox and it, uh, everything will go to, to Cloudflare. Um, that is not the plan. Instead. Um, Mozilla is working with local providers of DOH services, and uh, they certify local provider, and they will provide a list of operators of DOH service in Firefox, and they will select for every region one of them uh, to be the default. So it might be then that for Germany as a region or for the German-speaking region uh, that there will be some provider, um, hopefully one that we mostly can trust, 
uh, that will be then the default in Firefox, but in there. Uh, Mozilla has published the requirements of being certified, and uh, the link is in here, you can read that. Also, if you want to operate your own DOH server and you want to be listed in, in, in Mozilla or Firefox, uh, you have to uh, check these requirements, and then you can uh, request your service to be listed in there. Uh, Chrome. Uh, there is a DOH in Chrome currently, but it can only be enabled with a command line switch. Uh, and there's a link how to do that. Um, the Google team has announced that they plan to have a GUI configuration part in Chrome 78, which is uh, one or two versions in the future. But they don't have any plans to switch on DOH by default. So it will always be for Chrome an optional uh, setting to do. Here's a, a list of uh, DOH operators. Um, and yeah. So, what is the difference between DOT and DOH? Um, DOT can be easily blocked because it's running on a dedicated port. And especially in certain markets where DNS interception is very uh, often done, like in Asian markets, like in Indonesia, um, the, the people there, the, the users, they only have actually two ports that they can use for DNS name resolution. It's port 53 UDP, and only that, and only to the local ISP. And, and that one is filtering, and is maybe intercepting traffic, and is maybe even changing traffic. And it's port 443. Nothing else is open there. And of course, the operators will not change that. They will not open port 853 for privacy, because they don't want privacy, and also the governments might not want privacy there. Um, DOH is made to look like normal HTTPS traffic. So the idea is that selective blocking of only DOH is very difficult. And blocking all port 443, all web traffic, is impossible for an ISP. That's the idea behind DOH. So it's, of course, a mess. It's a protocol mess to have DNS over port 443 in HTTPS. It's true, and it's a nightmare for every engineer. But it seems to be that if we want to have a privacy-enabled internet, we can't rely on a good structured internet hierarchy anymore. We have to look for loopholes where we can sneak the privacy in. Also, DOH is very easy to implement because it's based on HTTPS, and most programmers nowadays know how to do that, um, more though than doing BSD socket programming. And uh, DOH also enables developers to do name resolution on the application level. Of course, that scares a lot of people, having DNS resolution on the application level, because that would mean that every application can have its own DNS resolution pass, and different applications can get different answers uh, for the same question. Uh, and that is a nightmare to troubleshoot. But it's, uh, it's getting even better later on. So there's a dilemma with DOH um, to reach the internet users that are really in need of privacy. And this is not we in the Western world. It's not we in Europe. We have quite good privacy laws in Europe. But in the US, in Asia, there are a lot of networks where getting privacy access to the internet is very, very hard. And for these people, uh, we need to have a, uh, have a solution. And uh, how Mozilla looks like is, uh, at this is they say, we have, to, we have to find a default, we have to turn it on by default, because if we make it a, an optional configuration somewhere, it's only the nerds that will switch it on. It's only the people here at camp that know how to switch it on. And these people don't need it because they, they know how to protect themselves. They know about privacy. We need to have a solution that works for 99% of the rest of the internet population. And, and for them, you can't explain the problem. You have to get some default in there. And, and, and Mozilla says this is very similar to uh, the, um, the, the uh, certificate authority, uh, um, authority selection in the browsers. So the people we trust with the certificates, they are also provided by the browser, so also lets us uh, put in a, a vetted list of uh, DOH providers in the browser. 
that still might lead to some centralization of DNS queries, and that is, of course, bad because centralization uh, creates a point uh, where data can be collected and being analyzed. That's, that's bad. So there's a dilemma. We can't have one without the other, so we can't have a 100% good solution. We have to fight and we have to discuss a middle ground. And uh, the discussion is not over and we can still participate in this discussion. So then I looked at um, DOH and whether that is only in the browser space, because sometimes um, people who fight DOH tell me that, okay, this is something the browser vendors want to push on the internet people, and nobody wants that, really. It's just the browser people that wants it. So I looked at the, uh, uh, the, the landscape of, uh, of software that is on GitLab and, and GitHub uh, to see, is it only the browsers, or are there other projects that, that use DOT or DOH? And I did that in May and uh, July this year. Uh, and I looked only at, at genuine software products, not of composing products, not something that just wraps with a Docker container some existing software, but new software that implements either DOH or DOT. And you can find the list of implementations there. Currently, 55 implementations I, I list there. Um, interesting is the implementation languages of uh, all the stuff that's being newly implemented. Go, the Go programming language, has uh, su superseded uh, C and C++, which is uh, still second, but the most new stuff is, uh, is done in, in Go. I would say most, always, uh, most new projects are done in Go, and the C projects are existing DNS software that had now DOH bolted on. Uh, some is in JavaScript, uh, some is in Python, Rust, and Java, and then we have a longer tail of uh, the usual suspects of other programming languages. Uh, there's much more DOH than DOT. We have uh, 41 projects uh, of five, 55 that implement DOH, and we have uh, 23 that implement DOT. Some implement both. Uh, the project start, that's interesting. So in 2015 is the year when uh, DOT was first announced, and there were just uh, a very few projects there, and it really spiked last year the year when um, the DOH RFC was uh, published. And we, have 20, we had 29 new projects last year, and we have 13 projects this year. And I I'm, I'm, uh, think that we will reach uh, a very similar 20-something number at the end of the year, because every, every month I look for new stuff, and uh, five or six or seven new projects appear there. Then I, I looked at the freshness, whether these are just one-shot projects that are published on GitHub and, and left there to, to die, or are there active projects? Are there uh, issues in the back tracker that being worked on? Is there new uh, commits on the code? And most projects of, 45 of, of 44 of 55 are active, and uh, 11 are, are dormant, are dead, and uh, nothing happens there. Here are some applications that have DOH or DOT. It's uh, Firefox and Chrome. Uh, curl on the command line has that. Tenta browser and Bromite are two browsers in the, in the mobile space and on Android that have that implemented. Um, on the operating system side, uh, systemd resolve D on Linux has it, but not on by default. You have to enable it uh, on uh, default for DOT. Unwind is a new system resolver for OpenBSD that shipped first time with uh, OpenBSD 6.5 in April this year, and that has DOT built in. And there's a resolver module for uh, libc. Um, that is um, a proof of concept state, uh, but it could be expanded on, and that would give uh, DOT or DOH to all applications. Now, uh, there's a lot of client proxies. I won't cover them, all of them, but you find the links on the implementation page. And server proxies as well. And there are uh, DNS servers that now implement DOH and DOT directly, like Unbound, Not, and also the SDNS uh, software. So what I found missing in the DOH, DOT software is uh, certificate authentication via Dane. They usually authenticate via the certificate store of the operating systems, but having authentication via Dane would be even stronger, having that. 
uh, a witness function would be nice, meaning that a query received from a client would be sent to multiple operators, multiple servers in the internet, and then we wait for two or three answers coming back, and then we compare the answers. And if they don't match up, we uh, take a majority vote. So if just one operator plays foul and, and changes the DNS data, uh, such a software will detect that, and then we'll go with the answer the most uh, DNS uh, servers provide. Of course, it will slow down DNS, so there should be a switch somewhere for the user to decide whether the user wants to have a secure and private or a fast internet. And of course, all the new software, there's almost, I haven't seen any security audits, so, and it's all new stuff there, there's probably a tons of security bugs in there still, and um, there would be a need of uh, doing some uh, software security audit for these new softwares. So what's in the future? We have DNS over Quick. Now, Quick is a new protocol that has been developed inside Google and is now at the ITF for standardization. It is to be replacing TCP. It's based on UDP, but it has TCP functionality built in. It's already in Chrome and it's already on the Google server side. So if you have used Chrome with the Google search page or YouTube in the last three years, you have used Quick. Because if you have Chrome and you contact some of the Google services, especially YouTube, uh, the browser will automatically detect that, that uh, this website is quick enabled and it will switch over and not use TCP, it will use Quick. Uh, the reason why Google developed Quick is because uh, TCP is uh, ossified, meaning it's impossible to change TCP because there are so many middle boxes, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, that make certain assumptions how TCP works. And if you change TCP as a protocol, these middle boxes will break. And it's impossible to change all the middle boxes or just even get the vendors and the users aware of this problem. So it's, uh, we are in a state that TCP cannot be changed anymore. It cannot be made better, even though there are ideas to make TCP better. So um, the route that, that Google goes is to, to create a new protocol that works on UDP because UDP is, um, is not a problem. Uh, you can make any changes to UDP or on top of UDP and it usually just goes transparent to the firewalls. And of course, with this new protocol, there's an idea to have also DNS over this new quick protocol. Um, yeah, it, uh, Quick has uh, TLS 1.3 built in. It has uh, zero round trip time, encryption, resumption, and all this. All that uh, we have in TLS 1.3 is also in Quick. And um, there's currently discussion on the ITF how to standardize uh, DNS over Quick. And it would look the same as DOH or DOT, just with a different transport protocol. But not sure if I have that here. Um, yeah, uh, Quick is the, the the idea of Quick is that Quick is not built into operating systems like the TCP/IP stack, but it's built in the applications, like it is in Chrome today. So it is a new network stack that is in the applications. So if you are feared of having DOH and having all applications doing different DNS name resolution, with Quick, all applications will have a different TCP IP stack, basically, and talk differently to, uh, to the outside world. And that will be a troubleshooting nightmare, but we'll see how that ends. So here's a comparison of uh, uh, DNS over TLS and, and Quick and, and traditional uh, TCP by the the person by Christian Hoytema who wrote the draft to the uh, Quick uh, implementation for DNS, and of course Quick comes out the best on the right side. Uh, it has all the the nice properties that one wants. So I'm almost. Coming to the end of this talk, um, we see that the DNS is, is uh, evolving fast these days. There's many, many changes to the DNS protocol, not only the new transport protocol, but much more like uh, eDNS padding and uh, QNAME minimization. And for some people, it's, it's too fast. Uh, Bert Hubbard from PowerDNS wrote this uh, article, The DNS Camel. And uh, he, he basically says that the DNS is like a camel, and if we put too much stuff on it, it will break and not work anymore, uh, which is true. 
Uh, so the internet and especially the DNS community are currently working on also deprecating some old behaviors of DNS to be able to uh, rip out um, unused stuff out of the DNS software. But I'm very certain that uh, the, the future of DNS communication will be encrypted. It will either be DOT, it will DOH, or it will DOQ. Uh, if, if I had to, to make a guess, I would say it's DOH. And it will be DOH, and uh, there's nothing we can much do about it. We can e only maybe shape the way how it is implemented, but we can't avoid that, we can't stop that anymore. I see that DOH or DOQ have both the potential of centralization or decentralization. It really depends on the software or and how much operators are there of these DOH and DOQ servers. If, if, if nobody but the big vendors are implementing this, of course there will be centralization. If a lot of ISPs, if a lot of privacy organizations, if a lot of private people implement DOH and DOC servers and make them public and operate them in a responsible way, we can have even a better internet and a, and a decentralized internet by having that. The software is there, the protocols are there, the protocols are neutral. The protocols don't demand how it's implemented. Of course, if DOH is implemented and, and all data is being sent to one operator, that's bad. But if we have a lot of DOH servers out there and users can choose, and maybe the software is even intelligent to choose for the user, then it could have a decentralization effect and that would be good. What can we do? We can start operating a DOH and DOT server. It's, it's not rocket science, it's quite easy. Um, software is there, software is mature, we can use that. Uh, we can hack on the DOH and DOT server, maybe do security audits, maybe implement a witness function that is currently not there, maybe implement Dane um, um, authentication of, of uh, certificates. We can work on, if, uh, if, if we work on operating systems like Linux or the BSDs or Haiku or any uh, Illumnus or something like that, we can try to bring these new technologies into these operating systems. We can't avoid them. Don't try to say, oh, I want my old DNS and I won't do this new stuff. It's, it's already decided, I guess. It's uh, nothing we can do about it. But if we, if we implement that in the operating system, we can give the users a choice and uh, maybe a, a sane choice there. Uh, please engage with the ITF. Don't just criticize the ITF of the uh, RFCs they make. The ITF and the RFC process is open. Uh, everyone can participate. There's no membership fee. If you can't travel to the meetings, there's remote participation. You just need your time, sit there, uh, listen to the talks, and you can uh, use Jabba Chat to ask questions or bring in your, your input there. That is much appreciated. Um, the ITF needs more people from the base, from the ground, uh, to bring input there. Because if, if we don't do that, it's the big people from the big corporations that steer the internet protocols. And that is maybe not in the best interest of the, the people using the internet. And uh, independent from this talk, deploy DNSSEC, because DNSSEC makes DNS more secure. So I thank you for, for listening, and I hope we have a few. <laughs> thank you. We might have a few minutes for question and answer, and if you want to have more discussion on the topic, um, the nice people at Digital Courage, who operate a DOT server, they um, allowed us uh, to, to go there at uh, 6 o'clock and have a little meeting there and a discussion. So if you are interested in the topic of DOH, DOT, and DNS privacy, uh, you can meet me and other people uh, over at Digital Courage around 6 o'clock, or a little bit later. Six. Six-ish, yes. Okay, uh, thank you, Karsten. Uh, are there questions here in our audience, please? Yes, there. Um, can someone with the mic go there? Oops, be careful. Phones and some Thanks. bottles.
Um, you mentioned the possibility between centralization or decentralization um, that this uh, project could bring. So one question I had here is, are there any plans for uh, making sure that authoritative DNS uh, servers, name servers, run a v one variation of those secured uh, resolution protocols? Because if we want a real decentralized service, what we want is for me at home to be able to run my own recursive um, DNS over HTTP resolution scheme, even though I am behind an ISP that blocks the pirate bay and that sort of thing. Which means to be able to do that locally, I need to uh, be able to reach all the authoritative name servers over the HTTPS to make that work. Are there any plans for this that you know of? Uh, yes, um, the uh, DNS Privacy Working Group in the ITF is currently exactly working on that. They are looking into a protocol extension for DOT and DOH between the resolver and the authoritative servers. It's still work in progress. It's not there. There are some proof of concept Im implementation in software already. Um, but uh, this is the second step. Um, securing the, the pass between client and resolver was the first step. And this is what we have today. That is mature. We have the RFCs. And the second step, securing resolver to authoritative communication that's currently being worked on. Excellent. Thanks. I see a question here in front. So. What is any of this new security worth when there's no protection from downgrade attacks? If it always falls back and there's no way to know if there's supposed to be an encrypted channel to this DNS server, what is truly gained in the face of an active attacker? Uh, most of these software um, have uh, two modes. One is the opportunistic and one is the strict mode. The opportunistic mode has a downgrade possibility. It falls back. Either it falls back uh, to unauthenticated uh, TLS or even it falls back to classic DNS. But you can, most software you can configure uh, in a strict mode and then it will not be downgradable. It will just fail if uh, uh, the encrypted and authenticated transport is not available. Okay, some more questions here, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you for the talk. Um, just a quick question about the uh, DNS inside application. Uh, what, is your th what are your thoughts on why corporations are doing this? Is it just because it's simpler, because they own the software that implements it right now? Or do you think they have maybe nefarious thoughts or plans? Um, for I mean, I can't look into people, people, people's hats. Uh, I, I trust Mozilla in so far. I've, I've talked with uh, certain people from Mozilla, and they were frustrated with DOT and the process of uh, DOT being implemented in the world. Uh, the DOT RFC is now three or four years old, and it has not seen wide adoption. And uh, that was one of the reasons why Mozilla worked on DOH, uh, because then they have control uh, over the client side. Uh, and they don't have to wait for the operating system vendors, because DOT is usually something that you have in your operating system. Of course, others might have other plans. Uh, and I see, especially on the mobile space, which is the majority of Internet users today, uh, I, I fear that we have different apps on, in the mobile space that all have the same, the, the, all have different uh, DNS name resolution, and that uh, different operators give the application developers money to put in their DNS resolver there, uh, because then they can uh, analyze the traffic and, and get uh, um, stuff out of that, for whatever reason, and that okay. is not what we want. Okay, see someone. What about the initial host name of the DOH or DOT server? How is that getting resolved to an IP address? And uh, isn't that a point where um, censorship could already start to not letting people know where they can get DA DNS over HTTPS or TLS? Yes, uh, so first, uh, how is this resolved? How is the first step? The name of the DOT or DOH re uh, server is resolved. Um, depends on the software. Uh, some have uh, some hard-coded bootstrap server, others use just traditional DNS for that. 
uh, about the way how to, uh, if that would be an, ang uh, an angle to intercept and, and subvert the whole scheme. Uh, no, because of course someone could intercept this first query and give a different IP address for the name, but then the certificate wouldn't match. So if you have a strict mode where you really check the certificate of the uh, other endpoint, um, unless the uh, the attacker has a, a ability to to fake uh, a TLS certificate, um, it wouldn't work. Great. Of course, there's a problem. That's why I say uh, we should have software that, that relies on Dane and not on the public key infrastructure of the Internet with the certification authorities because that is a completely different problem space. And yes, it's not perfect. Okay, this gentleman. Hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm wondering, as long as we don't have uh, encrypted server name indication, a lot of the privacy benefits are lost again in the next in the follow-up request after the DNS lookup. Yes, that's true, but uh, encrypted you, SNI is being worked on. Are yeah. you familiar with the plans of the browser vendors uh, regarding mm. encrypted server name indication? Not so deeply as other people. I'm more a DNS person, but I, I've just talked to someone today who's more in that space, and he told me that this is currently actively worked on. I can't give a date when that will be there, but both uh, or all the big vendors, uh, Apple, Google with Chrome and, and Mozilla are, are pushing that forward. I just have one more, one last question here since uh, we have to close. Um, are there already possible solutions for the split view DNS problem you mentioned? Um, uh, is, uh, I understand the question correct. Are there possible solutions for the split DNS problem? Yes. Um, Probably yes. I haven't really looked into that. Um, but what you can do is you can uh, send certain queries to the system resolver that your operating system has uh, to figure out uh, whether there is some specific namespace. But I'm not in the details of that. And this is still an open question and still something to be researched. It's the reason why Mozilla hasn't turned on DOH by default, because they haven't figured out a good way to do this. So it's still researching on that. But this is a problem that needs to be solved. Great, Carson. You, uh, well, I got the virus as well now. I think <laughs> some other people here got this DNS virus. Thank you, Carson Strollman. Give a uh, thank please. you.